Shalom, you've heard it from the rabbis that one can't understand the written Torah without the oral law. So let's investigate those two words, written Torah and oral law. So what is a written Torah? Some will say the first five books of the Bible. However, some rabbis say the Torah started off with Exodus, and the written Torah is Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. However, in a sense, both parties are right. A wise man said the oral Torah is in the written Torah. Is the first five books of the Torah a legitimate name of the Torah? Yes, but the Torah can be broken into three easy parts so we can have a better understanding of the written Torah, oral Torah, and oral law. The first part of the Torah is the beginning, Genesis. The second part of the Torah is the written Torah, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And the third part of the Torah is the oral Torah. Moses is orally giving the written Torah to Israel and the second generation and all that joined themselves. Plus, it's a second witness as a written Torah for truth. Moses and Aaron wasn't able to enter the land because of the rebellion, and Moses knows that he's going to die. So Deuteronomy is Moses' last dying words, or his last will and testament. Moses is orally giving the written Torah and Genesis to the second generation with more detail. When the written Torah was first written, the second generation was young. Now it's 40 years later because the first generation died because of their lack in faith was disturbing to the Creator, and they died in the wilderness. Everything that we read in Deuteronomy is a recap of the written Torah and Genesis plus with more detail. Some will say the blessings and curses starts off in Deuteronomy, but my reply to the biblical moron is the blessings and curses starts in Leviticus 26. So when the believer reads Deuteronomy, one must read it in one breath from Deuteronomy 1 all the way to Deuteronomy 34 like a last will and testament or like someone's last dying words. Do not read it like rabbinic Torah portion studies like most messianics and Hebrew root leaders read Deuteronomy. So back to the questions that the rabbis claim. Does one need to understand the oral Torah to understand the written Torah? Yes, because if you take Deuteronomy out of the Torah, you'll be totally clueless of how to understand the written Torah. However, and unfortunately, the rabbis have invented their own oral law, the Mishnah, the Talmud, thinking that these laws of men is going to teach us the law of Moses. In rabbinic irrational theology, the rabbis teach that Moses received two revelations from Mount Sinai, the written Torah and the oral law. However, in the Tanakh, there's no evidence that supports this second revelation. And also in the Tanakh, there's no evidence that supports the word oral law or even the word rabbi. Rabbinic law doesn't teach anyone how to understand the Torah because we actually have six oral Torahs for truth that teaches us how to live and obey the written Torah of Moses. First, we have Deuteronomy, the oral Torah of Moses. Second, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Revelation, the oral Torah of Yeshua, the Messiah, and he is our high priest, and we must obey those words diligently. And then we have the rest of the Bible to understand the cause and effect of the Torah and the history of Israel. If you did not know this information, I hope it helped you grow in knowledge and strengthen your faith. It's a great thing to know the Torah by these great divine titles, but it's a better thing to know the words written within and even better for the Creator to show you the secrets to His Torah. However, if you're receiving this information, I have to warn you. Yeshua says, when more information is given to you, more is expected from you. Chapter 12 Be dressed for service and well prepared as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. There will be special favor for those who are ready and waiting for his return. I tell you, he himself will seat them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, there will be special favor for his servants who are ready. Know this, a homeowner who knew exactly when a burglar was coming would not permit the house to be broken into. You must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Peter asked, Lord, is this illustration just for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, I'm talking to any faithful, sensible servant to whom the Master gives the responsibility of managing his household and feeding his family. 
If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I assure you the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But if the servant thinks, my master won't be back for a while, and begins oppressing the other servants, partying and getting drunk, well, the master will return unannounced and unexpected. He will tear the servant apart and banish him with the unfaithful. The servant will be severely punished, for though he knew his duty, he refused to do it. But people who are not aware that they are doing wrong will be punished only lightly. Much is required from those to whom much is given, and much more is required from those to whom much more is given. I have come to bring fire to the earth, and I wish that my task were already completed. There is a terrible baptism ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to bring strife and division. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or the other way around. There will be a division between father and son, mother and daughter, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Understand the weight of sin, or sin according to Moses. Remember, the Creator holds his priests and kings to the highest standard of a behavior and obedience to the Torah. Remember, if an average Israelite sins by lying, God will punish that Israelite for that sin. However, if his priest or king sins that same lie, the priest and king will suffer more divine punishment than the average Israelite. To those who has woken up through the Holy Spirit and now following the word and those new to Torah, I hope you guys like this episode of Rabbinic Law versus the Oral Law of Moses and the Oral Law of Yeshua. I sure did. I'm Mike Molinar and this is Military Torah.